Uh, thanks for those who are tuning in. A lot of people find this uh, uh, these services to be a source of inspiration and hope for you guys, and uh, and thank God that you're tuning in. Amen. We just we love to have you and. And uh, we count it a blessing to get to minister to you week in and week out. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That was really weak. Amen. I want I want the two people that are in the sanctuary just to shout. Give me a, you know. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. I'm going to get a drink of water here real quick. Anybody else just feel thirsty? Amen. We'll give you free water. Amen. Give you some living water, too. Praise God. Amen. It's always a good thing. Well, as usual, I uh, whenever the Lord just kind of slaps me around a little bit and puts something on my heart, uh, I say that loosely. Amen. God never really does anything to me that isn't good. Amen. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Amen. And there is no variance or shadow of turning in Him. Amen. He is a good God, and He's always a good God. Amen. But I, I just feel like with everything uh, kind of coming to a boil right now, I, I don't know why, but just I talk to just, you know, different people, whether it's here or whether it's all over the country. I talk to them on the phone or different things at different times. And I just think, uh, I just think everything's kind of coming to a, to a boil right now. Anybody kind of experience that in life? It's, it's like, it's like uh, it's, everything's getting a little crazy out there. Amen. I mean, not that it hasn't been crazy a little bit already, but it just seems like things are just kind of amping up. They're just kind of getting, you know, amped up. And, and I know my kids have never seen a lot of the stuff that's going on in their lifetime. I, we may have seen some stuff like this back when we were younger. Or some of you are a little older, may have experienced Vietnam or or different things like that, and uh, and I know my dad did, and I know Mike, you did, and we thank you for that. But I mean, there's just there's just wars erupting. It seems like everywhere, and there's threats of wars going on. There's crime is out of you know like control. Amen. And uh, and I've been you know I've experienced some of that you know people's crime waves you know here lately. But COVID has still got people kind of scared, and some you know some of them are still hiding out and you know you know in their homes or behind their mask. And I mean, still today, after, you know, two and a half years of, of this whole pandemic and different things, and just life just seems different. It just, man, it's just like if you, if you, unless you have your head buried in the sand somewhere, life is just like changing and erupting. And just, uh, matter of fact, I got a, a statistic the other day that I didn't want to read, but teen suicide is at an absolute record high right now. People are taking their own life because they've lost all hope. And uh, they just feel like there's no sense or no point in going on, so they, they, they just take their own life. And it's, it's a tragedy yeah. that people that feel like they have a vision or, or feel like they should have you know, their place in this world to, to, to make a mark and different things are just ending it and just giving up. It's sad. Come on, somebody. And, and believe it or not, even in the Bible Belt, the statistics are just up there just as well as anywhere else. Uh, on teen suicide it doesn't really matter where it's just across the board just you know, it's just everywhere but if you watch much news you, you know you almost and it doesn't matter what news station you watch it, it just I mean it it really what I mean by that is, is it doesn't matter which one you watch it's negative I mean it's just it's just flat out negative it's just it just kind of starts to bring your spirit down a little bit and uh, and by you know by the end of the week sometimes you you almost just feel yourself hunched over just kind of exhausted from just everything that's going on and your mind is just so smashed full of you know negative news and and stuff it it just uh it's it's just almost depressing amen it's almost like you're at the end of the week saying, man, I just can't take much more of this. I mean, just negative, you know, just just an onslaught of just negative news and just negative, 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 negative. How many know what I'm talking about? Anybody can relate to that? And have I talked to people and I, you know, and, and you know, whether here or different states across the country and different things, I, I got family members spread out all over the place. I got people living all over the place. I got friends that, that are from the East Coast, to the West Coast, all the way down to the Gulf and all the way back up. And it just seems like there's just something the enemy is just trying to bring a, a, a depression or a hopelessness in people's lives. And he's trying to steal our hope. 
And I felt like the Lord was just saying, you know what, you need to change your message this morning. And you need to preach on hope. And I know I normally do this around Christmas and stuff, but um, I just felt like the Lord was just saying, we just need like, you know, a shovel full of like just a good dose of hope this morning. Amen. Just a little bit of encouragement just to kind of get you kind of get you going a little bit. Amen. But uh, it makes me just it just really makes me as I hear all this stuff going on and and, uh, you know, I, I know that, you know, Samantha and I, uh, we, we really try the best we possibly can to, to feed other people and to minister to other people. And when other people are dragging or, you know, and down and saying, pray for me, pastor, pray, we do, we pray for everybody. And we're, we have a big list that we pray for people constantly all the time. And, and so we're praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and giving and giving and giving and giving. Sometimes it's like, Lord, I need to recharge my battery. You know, I just need to. I just need to recharge a little bit myself, amen. amen. And it's 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 uh, it's a good time to kind of recharge a little bit, amen. And I felt like the Lord was just saying, I want you to refocus. I want you to refocus your attention. Come on, somebody. And so uh, within a, in the next few weeks, we're going to do a week long fast before Easter, and uh, uh, be, just because I felt like the Lord was telling us to do that, amen. And it it helps refocus some things. But it makes me, it just makes me really want to refocus my attention on where my source of hope and help comes from. You know, the Bible is full of, you know, just look to the mountains from where, whence my help cometh from. Amen. And my help and, and my strength is in the Lord. Amen. And, and so you have to just start encouraging yourself and just speaking to yourself and saying, God, you know, I know there's nobody that's, you know, just, you know, you know calling up and wanting to minister to Pastor Jim. But I know it's a calling. God has called me to be an encourager. God's called us to motivate and encourage people and, and minister this gospel. Amen. And uh, I can relate to Jesus where it says that he pulled himself away and split and hid out in the woods for a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that was a little soft. Amen. Even Jesus is like, whoa, man, I, I, need, to get, I, need, to get the, I need to go up in the mountains here for a little bit or something. You know what I mean? But uh, I feel people are hurting. And uh, I think they're hurting worse than, than what we really know. And I felt like the Lord was just saying people are hurting way more than you really know. And they're hurting way more than you really see. And uh, the Lord was put on my heart. He said they're losing hope. They're losing hope. And we need to encourage one another in the Lord. Amen. We need to encourage one another and pray for one another in the Lord. Amen. And, uh, and uh, don't lose sight. Don't lose your focus. Come on, somebody. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things going on in the world. And, and we shouldn't have the same demeanor or we shouldn't have the same uh, disposition as the world has because we have hope. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's what, that's, what sets the, that's what sets the church apart from any other. We've been talking about the, the birth of the church, the New Testament church and acts and different things. And and uh, one of the things that the, the New Testament church uh, possessed was the Holy Spirit and power and joy and, and uh, the spirit of encouragement and, and strength. And amen? amen. That's, that's us. That's, that's who we are. Amen. We shouldn't be discouraged with everybody else. Amen. But we should be encouraging everybody else. But uh, I just feel like people are hurting a little more than what they're putting on, putting out, letting, letting you see. Come on, somebody. So let's focus our attention on, on who is the source of our hope. Amen. Who is the source of your hope? And man, I discovered this long time ago that money is not my source. My job, matter of fact, my job isn't even in my source. I know some, you know, most guys find their identity and self-worth in what they do. And, uh, but we need to find our, our self-worth and our identity and who he is. And who I am to him. Much more than what I do. Amen? I mean, there is a sense of significance and, and a sense of identity and, and, and feeling like, you know, you're accomplishing something when you're taking care of your family. And, you know, I've pretty much raised four kids by now. And, and, uh, and I, was, I was thinking the other day, how much have I spent on food, honestly? <laughs> I mean, like, literally, I could be a millionaire by now, I think. I, just on the food, amen. And then we and Matt were watching the television last night. It's like good, goodness. I mean, a gal is showing down somewhere in east, back east, that that a gallon of milk was eight dollars and twenty six cents. And I was like, man, that's higher than gas. And I thought, 
man. I mean, I can remember when a gallon of milk was like 97 cents. I mean, so get two or three, you know. I mean, it just, it just, it just, if you look at all this stuff and this stuff just keeps coming in, it almost seems like, wow, man, what is going on? But I just want to talk about hope this morning, just for just a, a short couple of minutes. And I'm going to give you five things that, that will kind of open the door to us receiving hope and who the source of our hope is. And um, I want to go to Job because I think many times people always look at Job and they go, look what happened to Job. And I said, yeah, look what happened to Job. I always like to say, yeah, that's right. Look what happened to Job. He, he, uh, he should have lost all hope. The story of Job goes that, matter of fact, it came to a certain place that his friends abandoned him. People wouldn't, didn't want to be around him. He had boils all over his body. He was sick. Uh, his wife wouldn't have, uh, you know, a uh, 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 relationship with him and, and different things. And, and matter of fact, it said his wife even abhorred his breath. She didn't want to be around him. And everybody, all of his friends and everybody around Job was just saying, just curse God and die. Get it over with. Lose, give up on all hope, curse God, and just die. And I love the story of Job because people say, look what happened to Job. I said, yeah, look what happened to him. Because I look more at, at more of what the end result was than what happened to him. Amen. And if you don't take life on like that and thinking, hey, look, I'm looking more to what the end results are going to be, more so than what I'm going through right now, you'll lose hope. If all your focus is and all your attention is drawn to just what's happening to you right now, you'll lose hope. You'll lose hope faster than anybody on the planet because all of our focus, all of our attention is just drilled in on this one negative bad thing that's happening right now. But listen, if you don't lose hope, there's a whole eternity. There's good things coming down the path. This is a season and it too shall pass. We go, how many know we go through seasons? Come on, somebody. I mean, I know here in Oklahoma we're messed up. We don't know what season we're in. And some of the other days said, I don't know if I should turn the air conditioner back on or if I should run the heater. Should we put the coats away or bring them back out? I think, Joy, you put your winter stuff away, didn't you, finally? I mean, come on. But we can't focus on this this season. Come on, somebody. And when I look at the story of Job, I actually, I, I find encouragement in looking at the life of Job and what he went through. And the reason why is because God always makes a way where there seems to be no way. God is still uh, Job's hope. And he, Job would never give up on that. No, I will not curse God and die. I don't care if you won't be around me. I know that all of my friends have forsaken me. I know that nobody even gives me one like on Facebook. Come on, somebody. One view. We got one view and that was from us. Come on, somebody. Amen. I think the reason why Sometimes why teen suicide is so high is because there's so many teens that are they're finding their, their self-worth and whether or not people respond to their little posts and different things like that and they compare themselves among themselves and they're all worried about this. I never, I don't really care if I get one or, or a hundred. I really, I honestly ask my family. I really don't care. I don't, I'm not, I, I just don't pay attention to that stuff. Amen. If it's good, they'll watch. If it's not, then, then they won't. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Amen. If they're bugged by the fact that I don't have much hair, then that's fine too. Amen. I, I, I mean, the devil's the one that has a full set of hair. Come on, somebody. I, that was a joke. Lighten up a little bit. Amen. But look, look, let's look at Job for just a moment. moment. Just in Job chapter 17 and verse 15. It's just a, a small verse of scripture out of the whole context of everything that's going on. But Job says, where then, he says, he says out loud, he says, where then is my hope? Where then is my hope? If it's not found in the things that he lost, if it's not found in relationship, it's not found in all these other things, where then is my hope? hope, if it's not found in, in finances, if it's not found in stability, if it's not found in, in living in a certain country or not living in a certain, if, where then is my hope? And he says, who can see any hope for me? 
And I'm here to say God is the one who sees hope for you. God is the one. When no one else has hope and everyone else looks and goes, you have wasted your life. Why did you do this? Why are you doing this? When everyone else gives up and no, you can't find hope in anybody else and there's nobody else around to give you a, even a glimpse of little hope, find your hope in God. I, it's sad that he's the last place that we go to look. But he is our source of hope. Amen. I know he's my source of hope. And, uh, and, and I have to go to him. I have to go to him. I have to go to him. He is my source. Just like Job. And uh, the story about Job is, is that Job was laying on the ground. And, and he said, you know, from the dust we came and from the dust I'm going back into, you know, and he's laying there looking at the dirt and he's laying on his face and he was just brought down, just discouraged and brought down out of absolutely nowhere. And, and, and he says that he found, he looked and he saw this little root in the ground. He found hope in a little root, a little tiny root coming out of the ground. And he, and he said, look, he said that there's hope for this little root right here. There's hope for me because even though the pressure of life and the pressure of the dirt and pressure of everything is upon that root, eventually that root, if it's given the proper sunshine and some rain, come on somebody, there's hope for that little root because it'll spring up and produce a tree. And if there's hope for this little root that's, that's under the pressure of life and different things, then there's hope for me. Come on somebody. We need to find our hope in him. Amen. So I'm going to give you five things, uh, five sources of hope that you can draw on. And they all have to do with God. Come on, somebody. Romans chapter 15, and I'm just going to jump right into this. But this is, this is, a, this is a different translation here. But uh, listen, in Romans chapter 15, 13, it says, May God, the source of hope. Who's the source of hope? God. Come on, it's not the news station. Come on, somebody. It's definitely not the government. Amen. You know, I can find hope in the fact that we only have a few more years of this stuff left. All right. All right, I'm just, I'm just saying. May God, the source of hope. Who is our source of hope? God. May God, the source of hope, fill you with joy and peace through your faith in him. That you all should, that, this is a southern version, <laughs> that you all overflow with hope. Now actually it says that you all, are you, you'll fl overflow with hope. Man, we need some, we need some overflow. We need some people to refocus their attention and discover where the source of their hope comes from. That they are overflowing, come on somebody, with hope. And with joy. Notice what he said. i got to read that one more time. He says, May God, the source of hope, fill you with joy and peace through your faith in him. Then you'll overflow with hope. Amen. Hope. Say hope. hope. He's the source of our hope. You got to get this, man. You got to settle this in your mind that nothing else is going to be the source of hope for your life. Nothing else is going to be the source of joy in your life. Nothing else will be the source of peace in your life. It's not just over the other side of the hill. It's not just around the other bend on that river. Matthew, come on. He is the source of all hope. And so we find it in different places with God. But where, where is the, the, you know, how is the source of all of our hope found? Number one, if you're, if you're taking notes, and I suggest you do. Nothing else. Stop looking somewhere else. Come on, somebody. Stop looking elsewhere for hope. But just go to him and look and turn to the one who is the source of all hope. Amen. Number one, we find hope in God's presence. We find hope in God's presence. And this is a terrible illustration, but for some reason, when I was a young kid, it gave me great confidence and hope 
when I knew that my older brother was around when someone was trying to pick a fight with me. <laughs> Just to find out that my older brother, that could scrap pretty good, would usually go, James, what did you do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. I promise. I didn't do anything. And they were back in the, in the 60s and 70s. They were busing kids from all over different states. And I was growing up in Michigan and Grand Rapids. And they were busing people from, uh, you know, what we call the bad part of town over in our town. And for whatever reason, this busload of guys got off. And they just decided that they didn't like me. And they started a fight with me. And there was like three or four of them. And I said, what did I do? And then just, you have the look. Was, the look is cross-eyed, freckles, red hair, turtleneck shirt. That's the look. Bell-bottom corduroy pants. I mean, come on, somebody. I mean, that's the look. Evidently, it was the look. But I remember one time, man, they were just getting ready to get into it. And this guy take a swing at me, and he missed me. And then I thought, okay, that's going to be on. We're going to get on. And here comes my brother. I said, oh, good, my brother. My brother's coming over. And first thing he said, James, what did you do? I did nothing. I literally, I, I, this time, this time, I did nothing. But he goes, I think you did something, so I'm not helping you, and he just walked off. So I go home, I got a bloody lip, my eyes all dotted up and stuff, my ear hurt and stuff, and, and uh, I got home, and I said, Phil, why'd you leave me? And he goes, I know you did something. You started a fight with somebody. I said, I didn't, I promised. This time, I did not. But God never leaves us, nor forsakes us. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I got off my point. Number one, we can find our hope of so our source of hope is found in Him, and it's found in number one in His presence. Come on, somebody. Psalm sixty-two, verse five says, "Find you shall find rest, O my soul, in God alone." My hope comes from Him. That's what David said. Listen, I find my rest in Him, O my soul. It says, in God alone, my hope comes from him. At least David had that right, that his hope came from God and his presence. There's something about just staying in the presence of God. I know when you get into trouble and you get into uh, pressures and everything, it makes you want to run from God, but I'm, I'm just here to encourage you, run to Him. Amen. It's in His presence where there's fullness of joy. Come on, somebody. It's in His presence that we find hope. It's being with Him. Sometimes it's just, you just need to turn the news off and turn all the social media off and turn everything off and just worship Him. God, I worship you. I thank you, God. I thank you for your presence. Find some hope for once. Amen. Rather than all the negative stuff. Isaiah 40 in verse 31 says, uh, so, so those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Those who hope in the Lord, they will renew their strength. In other words, God is our source of hope. And as we get into his presence, come on, somebody, we renew our strength. It's like a refreshing, a renewing of our strength. But I can guarantee you, you could spend three more hours watching, uh, you know, watching the news and you will not gain your strength. You might be buckled over by the end of the week. Just, oh, God, my mind can't take any more of this. Amen. He said, he said, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. That's, that's renewing of strength right there. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. God is the source of all hope and we find hope in his presence. Come on, somebody. Maybe just shut a few things off for a while or, or just not answer your phone for a little bit. Just, just worship him. Amen. Hope is found in his presence. Number two, I got to hurry. Number two, hope is found in God's promises. And I just, I just, when I look back over the years that I've been serving the Lord, I could pinpoint and just write down, where do I find hope? When, when, when there is no one to encourage the encourager, where do I find, where do I find encouragement? It's in his promises. When no one's calling me up saying, hey, Pastor Jim, I want to just encourage you today. Although Michael Shaner does a really good job of doing that. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. I will say thank you for that. Amen. 
But, you know, we don't have everybody ringing off our phone all, all day long just trying to say, hey, man, we want to encourage you. Yeah. You know where I find my encouragement? In His promises, in His Word. Come on, somebody. In Psalms 119.81, it says, My soul faints with longing for your salvation. He says, But I have put my hope in your word. Say his promises. His promises are his word. Come on, somebody. That's where his promises are found. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Remind yourself of God's promises, how much He loves us. Come on, somebody. Not, not that He's going to judge us, but that He loves us. For His compassions never fail, the Bible says. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. These are His promises. His mercies, His compassions, they never fail. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. Every day I get up, your mercies are new for me, God. Your grace is new for me, God, every morning. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you that you'll never leave me nor forsake. I'm standing on your promises. I find hope in what God said about us. That's a good place to say amen. Remind yourself. Come on, somebody. By his stripes, I'm healed. That's his promise. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. That's his promise. Amen. I'm finding hope in that. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. I'm in. I'm sitting at the table. Come on. We're dining. I'm finding hope in his promises and what he said to us. We find hope in God's presence and we find hope in God's promises. Number three, we find, we find hope in God's process. And, and some of you might think, well, this is crazy. But I have learned over the last 37, 38 years that there is a process to everything. And how many of you would say just yuck, yuck, yuck to the process? Don't like the, I, don't like the, I don't like the process. And some people, you know, maybe they like the process. I don't. I like to go from here to there, and I don't like everything in the middle. Anybody else? Just fine. I like to go from here to there. But there's a process. There's a process. And in Romans chapter 5 and verse 2, notice what it says. It says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. And you're thinking, you know, Paul it must have lost his mind. Why did he write this? We find rejoicing in the sufferings because we know that suffering produces what? Perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. The, the way Job could find hope through the process of what he went through is because God is on the other side always beckoning us come out. There's hope. When you, when you, you know, many of many times, I'm like, I, like I said, I've lost at least, I've lost at least a thousand pounds. <laughs> Maybe more over the course of my lifetime. I, I've, I've, I, I lose, and every time I start getting on a health trip, I say, okay, that's something, man, man, I'm going to start jogging a little bit or riding. I'm going to ride my bike. I'm going to ride my bike for a couple of miles a day. And, and I'm getting on a health thing, and I get on my bike, and I, you know, and Elizabeth wants to come with me, so we blaze off, you know, I make it up to the corner around the block, and I say, I'm done. <laughs> I don't even get a mile. And I go back to the house, and I'm like, wow, man, that worked out really good. <laughs> and then the next day, I'm like, okay, we're going we're gonna to do it this today. We're going two miles. We're going to do two miles riding our bike. And Elizabeth's like, really, Dad? And I said, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we're going to do it today. Get out there, go around. I say, okay, let's just make this a short trip. And we come back. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? In my mind, I want to do a couple of miles. But the reality is, is that the process is that you, you can do half a mile for a while. And then, and then you get up to a mile for a while. And then you get up to maybe a mile and a half for a while. There's a process to getting. I just throw out some kind of number. I want to do three miles today. 
Anybody ever do that? I'm going to lose 60 pounds this week. I mean, there is a process. Come on, somebody. I'm not saying you have to go out and ride for a mile or something like that, amen. I'm just saying that that's my experience. But there is, there is, there is character that's built in the process. I don't think I could be the man that I am today if I hadn't gone through some of the process and still found hope at the end of the tunnel. Come on, somebody. At the end of the process, it's built character into me. Fighting through the temptations, fighting through the different stuff, it builds character in us. And it builds hope and strength. Later, later on, you may not be able to see it right now, but later on, it's building character. And, you know, and it, it is a suffering when you have to get on a bike and try to ride it for a mile. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Bless you with dogs chasing you. That's why I like to take Elizabeth, because she can't ride as fast as I can. <laughs> it's a true story. We went around a corner the other day, man, these pit bulls coming around. They were, ah, and they were coming after us like that, and I was like, and I got going, and Elizabeth was just, ah! <laughs> hold your feet up, you know, hold your feet up. Just up. <laughs> Next time I'm bringing the gun. <laughs> there can be, can be hope found in the process of life. Come on, somebody. There, there can be a joy and, and a hope found in the process of of life. It builds character in us. It really does. Romans 8, 28, one of my favorite verses of scriptures. We use it probably a lot and a lot of people stand on this, but it says that we know that all things work together. Say work together. They're working together in the process. They're working together. Why? To produce an eternal hope in us. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love him, to those who have been called according to his purpose. And we're called by Him. Amen? We're called out of darkness into His marvelous light. We're going to put our hope and find our hope in the process. Somehow, we're just going to, we're just going to do it. Amen? We're, just going to, we're going to find hope in this process, whatever it might be right now. Amen. Thanks for that one amen, Samantha. I, I always have to pay her every week, you know, just to amen my, my sermons. Number four, we find hope in God's purpose. And, and, and really... I'm trying to encourage somebody out there. I, I don't know if anybody's getting a hold of this, but we find hope in God's purpose. There's no way I could be serving Him and living for Him and, and, and doing ministry as long as I have without coming back to the fact that I can find hope in, in His purpose, in His purpose and what She called me for. I have to go back to that and I say, God, You called me. I have purpose. And some of you need to tell yourself. Some of you need to look at the person next to you and say, you have purpose. Come on, look at him. Tell him, say, you have purpose. Come on, look at him. Don't be afraid. If it's your spouse, just tell him. Say, you have purpose. Hey, it's a friend. Say, you have purpose. We're not just meaningless, you know, breathers here on the planet. We have purpose. God designed us. He fashioned us. He made us for purpose in this life. Amen. And I'm going to find hope in God's purpose. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper. Hey, I like that. I thought I'd at least get one amen out of that. Plans to prosper. Hey, listen, if nothing else, just say, wait a minute. I got to find hope in this. God says He has plans to prosper me. I don't care if you don't like it or not. It's not your plans, it's God's plans. It's God's purpose. Come on, somebody. He plans to prosper me. Yeah, but if you see the economy, it's the, how much are we paying for gas? How much? We no, it's God's plans to prosper me. I can find hope in God's purpose. Amen. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. God's declaring it. He goes, I know the plans that I have for you. And some of us might say, well, will you share those plans with us? And he says, I will. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Come on, somebody. And the next time someone says, well, God is just allowing this to happen. It is God's, not God's plan to harm you. 
I can find hope in that. Come on, somebody, in his purpose. He said, but plans to give you a hope and a future. That's God's uh, 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 plan. It's his purpose. It's to give us a hope and a future and, and to prosper us. And I'm not talking about just finances. I'm talking about in relationships. It's in our mental health. It's in our physical bodies. It's a, it's a prosperity. It's a, it's a prosperity. It's, it's a, a wellness. It's a being better. Amen. God wants us better. Amen. Amen. He just don't want us just to feel better. He wants us better. Amen. Amen. And so I can find hope in God's purpose yes. for my life. Yes. And my calling that he's called me to. Amen. I mean, even though people are posting every other day, they're doing this great thing and they're doing that great thing. And, oh, look at all this a great thing. That's great. I'm glad you're finding hope in your purpose. This is what God's called me to. This is my purpose. Amen. And I have to find hope in my purpose. Yes. Amen. You know, for years, I, when the kids were younger, my purpose was really, and, and I know I was finding hope in it and I was loving life because my purpose was to raise my family. Yeah. It, that's what it was. It was my purpose was to take care of my wife and, and raise my family. And that's what, that's what I did. Amen. And I found hope in that. Amen. That one day these kids would get off the grid. Amen. And they. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Amen. And we never just have our five kids. Now, our, Emily's one of my kids right now. She's one of my. We always have friends. We always have people over and stuff like that. Amen. So um, what a blessing. Amen. I know God's going to bless us. Amen. Prosper us. Give us hope. Number five. If we find God, we find hope in God's presence. We find uh, uh, hope in God's promises. We find hope in God's process. We find hope in God's purposes for our life and our purpose. And number five is the last one. We find hope in God's place. And, and this is probably the most important one to me for whatever reason, is that this isn't, this isn't all there is. When, life, when life's been hard, come on somebody, when life's been really hard, for some of us, it's been harder than for others. Not everybody had a Job experience. But Job didn't lose hope in his experience. And when life isn't as hard for you, but it's hard for others, pray for them and encourage them that they don't lose their hope. Can you do that? Yes. Come on, son. We find hope in God's place. In John 14, Jesus said this. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I can find hope in the fact that Jesus has gone before me and that Jesus is providing and and. Uh, preparing a place for me. I can find hope in this life for the one that is to come. And the reason why I say I feel like this is the most important because if you don't know Jesus, you will have lost all hope because this, this isn't it right here. This isn't all we have. This isn't all we, all we get. There's, there's a place and Jesus has prepared the place for us. And so, Father, I just thank you this morning. I think, did I lose my microphone? Did someone cut me off or something? Yeah, it's not on. But anyways, we just thank you, Father God, for the place. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for the process, God. We find hope in you. And we recognize and realize that you are our hope. You're our strength. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's close out with this, this song this morning.